Poland recognizes many great heroes who fought for our independence. We fought for our freedom and yours in most distant places, but we can also distinguish discoverers and inventors who changed the fate of Poland and the world, and often we don't know much or even anything about them. They were intentionally ignored for decades following World War II. However, now we can tell their stories with pride, to remind Poland and the world about our great countrymen, great Polish inventors in the Second Polish Republic. Stefan Władysław Bryła was born in Krakow in 1885. He graduated secondary school in Stanisławów and until 1908 studied at Lviv Polytechnic School. He also studied abroad at Berlin Charlottenburg Polytechnic, among other schools. He was a comprehensively educated man. In 1910, he obtained his doctorate, which was a rare accomplishment in the technical fields in that era. In 1912, after gaining the support of Krakow's Academy of Learning, he traveled to the USA and Canada to learn about construction techniques. In the US, he was working during the construction of the biggest structure of that time, the Woolworth Building, with a height of 250 meters. He then came back from the US, but since he was curious about the world and enjoyed traveling, he went back through California, Japan and Siberia using the Trans-Siberian Railway, which was very close to being finished. Finally, in 1913, he returned to Poland. He then found a job at the Lviv Polytechnic School. He got married and in 1914 chose Persia and Transcaucasia for the honeymoon. He was traveling there when World War I broke out. Since he was an Austro-Hungarian subject, he was interned. However, conditions were pretty good and he was able to work as an engineer. He was playing a major part in unions and associations of Polish engineers in Russia. He attended the Polish Technician Convention in Moscow in 1917 as a vice chairman. He then came back to Lviv amidst the fights with the Ukrainians. He took part in the fighting. He then went to Warsaw to enlist during the Polish-Soviet War. He was fighting there, too. After the war, he became a professor at the Lviv Polytechnic, as it was known by that name since 1921. His focus was on the introduction of welding into the construction sector. His accomplishments in that field extended beyond Poland. He designed the first welded road bridge, erected in 1929 across the Słudwia River in Małżyce near Łowicz. The bridge still exists, but as a relic. Some say it was the first welded bridge in the world. It wasn't big, roughly 27 meters in total length. Nobody believed in welding back then. You could always see rivets, but welding? You couldn't check out what's inside. 
you could always see the rivets. But rivets meant more metal. Brewa introduced welding into construction. In 1928, while working for the Ministry of Public Works, he prepared regulations regarding welding in the construction sector. It was a very important step, since there were no good quality control processes in welding. So many countries were afraid to introduce it. This changed thanks to Brewa and his regulations. But some well-developed countries did not introduce it until the 1950s, when it became possible to use X-waves on welds. Brewa built not only this bridge, but also many other important objects, using welding and steel frame construction, such as today's Hotel Warszawa, known before the war as the Prudential Building, and located on the Napoleon Square, today known as the Warsaw Uprising Square. Another example may be the Jagiellonian Library in Krakow, and there were many more industrial and sports buildings, like the hall in Katowice. Many, many buildings and objects. He was a demon for work. He lectured at many universities. He had to employ a secretary to keep track of where he had to go. He was an expert in so many fields that he couldn't plan his activities. Some people were even joking that she knew when he had a date and with whom, since she was in charge of his entire schedule. Brewa was an important figure in the world of Polish technology. In 1934, he became a member of the Warsaw Academy of Technical Sciences. It was a great privilege, reserved only for outstanding people. He was a fulfilled man before the war. During World War II, Brewer bravely joined the underground. He was the head of industrial espionage and was preparing Poland for post-war restoration. His work was of utmost importance. He was also actively educating others due to his polytechnical background. Thanks to him, students were able to get doctorates during the occupation. Together with fellow engineer Gokieli, he was helping the Home Army with munitions production. In 1942, he was arrested and detained in the Paviak prison, but was later ransomed back, since it was possible back then. However, in November 1943, he was arrested with his entire family. And then in December 1943, he was executed near Tram Barn on the Puławska Street in Warsaw with a group of people. After the war, some associations were awarding people with a medal of Brewa. Even today, the Stanisław Brewa Award is being granted annually by the Polish Association of Civil Engineers and Technicians for exceptional achievements in the civil engineering field. One of the greatest engineers of interwar Poland, a brilliant builder and a pioneer of welding, a technique that was an absolute novelty back then. His bridge on the Swudwia River in Małżyce near Łowicz was the first welded bridge in the world. Engineers from Europe and the entire world were traveling to Poland to see it. His great passion for work, versatile interests, knack for organization and love of travel made him a great academic teacher, a brilliant constructor, politician and a patriot actively engaged in working and fighting for his country.